In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to get your Lego Spike Prime robot looking for multiple colors using its color sensor. Now we're going to be using a bit of Python code today to get our robot basically driving in a straight line, searching for four different colors, red, yellow, green, and blue. And when it comes across any, four, any one of those four colors on the ground, it's going to stop and display a beep sound to alert us that it's found a color. Then it's going to drive off and start searching for more colors. We're going to be learning something new with our coding today called if-else statements. Um, and I'll explain those in a little bit more detail when we get to them in the code. So let's get started by jumping over to the LEGO Education Spike app and making sure our robot is all built and turned on. And we can get started on making ourselves this new project. Now the project name that we're going to go with today, we can call it Identifying Multiple Colors. Uh, we'll click on Python as our coding language and click on Create. Now minimize the console and the knowledge base like usual. Delete all the text that comes in by default and just zoom in on um, that code so you can see it nice and clearly. Finally, make sure you've got your robot plugged into your computer either via the white USB cable in your kit or through Bluetooth. Uh, once you've got all those things done, you are good to go with your coding. So let's start by doing our usual imports that we do um, with Python. So we need to do from spike, import, and we're going to import four things here. We're going to have the motor pair, the prime hub, the speaker, and the color sensor. Okay, we will be using these four different things in our program today we're going to be using the motor pair to control the wheels the prime hub just gives us access to the yellow hub itself and we're going to actually access the speaker inside of the hub to play a sound and we're going to be using the color sensor as well to help us look for the four different colors once we've got our imports done we're going to initialize those different components now which just means we're going to set them up uh, so initialize the Motors, hub, and color sensor. Okay, so that's just a comment, just explaining what's about to happen in the next few lines of code. First of all, we'll give our wheels or our movement motors a name. I'm going to call them movement motors. You can call them whatever you want, though. I'm going to say movement motors equals motor pair, and just tell your computer which ports your movement motors or your wheels are plugged into and you can see at the top here mine are plugged into A and B. I need to write it as B comma A though just so that he drives forward. Um, we need to put in movement whoops movement motors and then dot set default speed next. We just want to set up our speed for our motors. I'm going to set it at 50% today. Uh, so that's the wheels looking all good. The next thing we're going to do is just initialize the hub. So we just write hub equals prime hub and a couple of brackets there. So that gives us access to the hub. And finally, we are going to set up the color sensor. So you can call the color sensor whatever name you like. I'm just going to call it color. Oops. Spelt the Australian way. And that's going to be equal to color sensor. Spelt the American way there. So you'll notice that color does not have a U there. And it's connected to port D. I can see that at the top as well. So that's everything initialized. So the next thing we're going to do is begin our coding. So I've kind of explained that already what we're going to do, but I'll just quickly go over it again. We're going to get our robot driving forward forever, basically. He's not going to stop until he comes across one of the four colors I mentioned earlier. So red, yellow, blue, or green. When he comes across any of those four colors, he's going to stop going to play a beep sound and then move forward off that patch of color and then go exploring again for any of those four colors and that's going to happen on an endless loop so our program will never actually end okay so let's start by getting our motors to drive forward so movement motors dot start bracket bracket is all we need to write there that start function will tell our motors to start and they will keep going so that will get our robot driving forward. Okay, now the next thing that I'm going to do is somewhat new to us. 
we're going to be getting the color sensor to store in the computer what color it is currently sensing beneath the robot. And the way it's going to do that is it's going to store the color that, that is currently sensing inside of a variable. So let me explain what a variable is. I've got a little pretty picture here to try and explain it. The way I like to explain variables is like a bucket. So imagine you've got a bucket here and this bucket can hold information. We can put information inside of that bucket and later on in our program we can empty that bucket and reuse the information inside of that bucket. So today we're going to have a bucket called ground color and inside of this bucket we're going to be storing whatever color our sensor spots or is sensing on the ground at the current time. So let me show you an example. If our robot is driving along and he's currently on some red ground. The color sensor would see the color red and what it would do is actually get that name of that color and store it inside of this ground color bucket. Now the color red is now sitting inside of that bucket and if we want to use that information later on in our program we can. We can empty the bucket and the color red will come out and we can use that to our advantage in our code. I know that is a little bit confusing Okay, but I'm going to do the code up now and try to explain it as I go along what's actually happening. But remember a variable, when I talk about a variable, it's like a bucket that is holding some sort of information that we can reuse in our code a little bit later on. Okay, so jumping back to our coding now. The next line of code, I'm going to make that variable or that bucket called ground color. And we need to tell it what to store inside of it. Okay, so inside of this bucket we are storing color.get underscore color bracket bracket. Okay, so just be careful with the spelling here. When we write a function up, so this get color function, we have to spell it the American way because some American dude has written Python, so we have to keep them happy and spell it the American way. This function called get color is simply activating our color sensor and it is picking up whatever color it can currently see. And whatever color that our um, robot is sensing is getting stored inside of this variable or this bucket called ground color. Okay, so that's what that line of code is doing. I'll just write in a comment that says, get the color currently being read by the color sensor and save it. So it saves it inside of that variable ground color. Okay, so we can use that ground color a little bit later on in our code, which we will in which you'll see in just a moment. All right, now the next thing we are going to do is use that new bit of code called an if else statement that I talked about at the start of the video. So an if else statement works uh, it's basically like a choose your own adventure in your code. So if a certain condition is true, then we're going to run a particular few lines of code. If a condition is false though, then it's going to run a different set of code. Let me write it up and I'll show you what I mean by that. Okay, so we're going to write if our ground color is equal to red. Now when we are testing a condition, so if we're testing something out here, so in this case we're trying to work out if our ground color is red, we have to do two equal signs. I know that sounds a bit weird, but when we are testing something out, we need to use two equal signs in Python. So if the ground color is red, okay, then we put a colon. And on the next line, we just write movement underscore motors dot stop, bracket, bracket. So if we are sensing the color red, then we're going to tell our robot to stop moving. And once it stops moving, we're going to play a sound. So it'll be just the hub.speaker.beep. And we're just going to play the middle C note again. That's note 60. And we're going to play it for one second. So I'll just right, play a one second beep for our comment. And finally, we just need to tell our robot movement motors to just kick back in. So movement motors dot move and we want them to move about 30 centimeters that will get them off the 
particular color they are currently on. If we don't do this little move line here, the robot gets stuck on that color forever and it just keeps beeping at you. Okay, so I'll just um, put in a comment that just says move off the current color patch or block of color, whatever it's sitting on. Okay, so that's the first thing. If we sense the color red, then we're going to run these lines of code. But what if we are not sensing the color red? What if we can see white beneath us or green beneath us or something like that? Well, that's where the if else section comes in. We need to write in the word else. Put a colon, press enter, and we just write movement underscore motors dot start, which just basically has him driving forward. Okay, so drive forward. All right, so you can see now what the if else statement looks like. So if this condition is true, so if the ground color is actually red, then we run these three lines. The computer knows to run these three lines because they are indented, which means they've been pushed or tabbed across a little bit. So you can see the little space at the start of each of those three lines. Um, but if the ground color is not red, then we do this bit down here. We come down to else and we run this line of code. And again, the computer knows to run that line of code because it has been indented under the word else. Okay, so we're either running these three lines or we're running this line. Okay, so feel free to test that out if you would like, but I'm not going to bother with that because we're not quite finished yet. There's one little bit we need to add. What we haven't done is we haven't told our robot to look for those other three colors that I mentioned earlier in the video. We also want to be looking for yellow, blue, and green colors on the ground. Okay, so the way we do that, we need to go back to this line here where it says if ground color equals red. What we need to do is we need to write or, and then we write ground underscore color equals blue. Oops. And then you just write or again, or ground color equals yellow, or ground color equals green. Okay, so now we've got the four different options. So if the ground color equals red, or the ground color equals blue, or the ground color equals yellow, or the ground color equals green, then we run these three lines of code just here. Okay, alternatively, we just keep driving forward and keep looking out for those different colors. All right, so the final thing that we need to do now is just get this code running on an endless loop. So that means we want this code running all of the time. If we were to run this now, it would not work because all it would do is quickly check for these four colors for the first split second that the codes run. And after that, it doesn't bother checking out those colors anymore, which means our program's not going to work. So we want this code running all the time. So the way we do that, we need to go back up to this um, gap up here on line number eight. Okay, I'm just going to make um, a new line there. And remember the code to make an endless loop is while true. You should get a capital T there for true. And everything below while true that you want to repeat forever needs to be indented. So I'm going to highlight the rest of that code there. Once you've got it all highlighted, press tab on your keyboard. And by pressing tab on your keyboard there, it just indents everything a little bit, which means it's now all part of this endless loop. So everything inside of that endless loop is going to be running forever. All right, so that's basically it. I'll zoom back out a little bit here so you can see all of the code. There it all is. Double check yours against mine. Hopefully I've got it all right. I think we can give it a test run now and make sure it's all working. So let's give it a go. All right, so mine just moved across four different colors, no worries at all, so hopefully yours did the same. Um, that's all I'm going to show you in this video tutorial. Hopefully you've picked up a few new little tricks there, in particular what a variable is. So we looked at that ground color variable today. It was like a bucket that stored some information, and that information, which was looking at what color the color sensor could currently see, was used again later in the code. So we emptied the bucket out, 
and um, used it in our code a bit further down. The other thing I wanted you to be aware of today was the if else statement. Okay, so if a condition is true, then you run a certain section of code. If the condition is false, then you run a different section of code instead. Um, it is a bit confusing, but again, with practice, that will all start to make a little bit more sense to you. Okay, so I will catch you in the next video tutorial.